Welcome to the third episode of the Bin Picking Studio webinar. Last time we configured an interface for the robot and the scanner, imported the PLCF, and we also completed the first steps of the CAD base configuration by uploading a model of the gripper and the model of the picked object. Please ensure that you've watched those first two episodes before watching this one to ensure you have built up the right foundation. Today we will cover configuring the grasping method. This involves setting a proper tool point, configuring reasonable gripping points, and pre-configuring the path stages for the robotic manipulator. Then we will cover the topic of working environments. On entering the initial page of grasping method configuration, a name for the extraction procedure must be recorded. In the following tabs, there is firstly a form for the definition of the tool point on the gripper. Next, the definition of one or multiple gripping points. These represent the places on the object which would make contact with the tool point. And finally, the definition of the sequence of robot moves or so-called path stages. In the current release, only single mode tools are supported and only one grasping method sequence at any one time. At this point, we must pause for a moment to discuss the term invariance. It's important because this term will be used multiple times in the next sections. Invariance is an alternative word for symmetry. Consider an object with the shape of a bottle and its symmetric axis to be the z-axis. It does not matter how the bottle is rotated when you want to pick from the top or from the bottom, but it is clearly the same when you rotate your bottle in the z-axis or when you want to grab it from the side. Thus we call bottle an object invariant for rotation in the z-axis. Enabling this invariant symmetry option, you can set up a series of points along any axis or combination of axes. Please use visualization and markers to drag and slide points and see the changes in real time. Remember, a tool point can have its own invariance and also the gripping point may also have its invariance. Let's continue with setting the tool point. Originally, an engineer was required to measure the dimensions of the physical tool and prepare a transformation matrix. The transformation matrix would translate and rotate a tool point from the origin of the CAD model to the end effector. If you remember from the previous webinar, the tool needs to be maintained in such a way that the origin of the drawing is located at the point where the tool is mounted on the robot. Now this position needs to be changed to the point on the tool where the gripper will make contact with the part picked object. Now there is no measuring or calculation required. All the configuration is done by moving the pointer of the red color in the visualization. You will still be able to review and adjust the numerical values. We will take a look at that in the next slide. In terms of general remarks, the z-axis should point out of the tool. We are using a so-called RGB convention for coordinate system axes. A red color represents the x-axis, green represents the y-axis, and blue represents the z-axis in the visualization. The arrow of each axis is pointing in a positive direction. On the right-hand side, you can see the visualizer. And on the left-hand side, there are three sections which allow the user to review numerical values. The first section holds the information about the definition of the position and rotation of the tool point relative to the origin. Again, the origin should be where we mount the tool on the robot. If you compare this with the previous slide, you can see that the tool point has been moved 255 millimeters in the positive direction of the blue arrow, which represents the z-axis. After that, the tool point has been moved 90 millimeters in the negative direction of the red arrow, which represents the x-axis. The second section holds information about the definition of the invariance of the tool in the selected axis. The basic mode is recommended for initial testing. In this particular example, we use a tool which can be rotated around the z-axis, 
Hence, an invariance in the Z axis is selected. The third section contains settings regarding the range of the invariance and the number of the steps within the range. A higher number of invariances increase the chance of successful path planning, but also increases the calculation time. In our example, 12 steps prove to be the right balance between the reachability of the object respective to the reasonable time of the inverse kinematics calculation. A very similar sequence of steps is also relevant for the gripping point definition. The gripping point represents a place on the object where we want our tool to make contact with the object. In our example, it would be the place somewhere on the surface since we are using a magnetic gripper. On the left hand side, there is a table with numerical values, but we again recommend a simple sliding of the red pointer in the visualization located on the right. We were firstly sliding a pointer in the opposite direction to the blue arrow, which represents a minus 20 millimeters in the Z axis. As a second step, we move the pointer in the positive direction of the green arrow, which represents a 12 millimeter translation in the Y axis. The checkbox option in the very bottom will enable an invariance menu. This page illustrates a basic mode of symmetry configuration. We use the y-axis which is displayed by a light blue line. Let's discuss once more why we need to configure the invariance of an object. Imagine for a moment a tool which has a coordinate system with the z-axis pointing out of the tool. Now a successful grip is by definition the exact overlay of the coordinate system of the tool to the coordinate system of the object. So we would be able to pick the part only in the case where the object was located in a position where the z-axis of the object is pointing down to the bin. Other scenarios are not allowed because the robot might collide with the bin. In most cases, we need to approach the object from the top. The goal is to cover the object with the gripping points from every possible angle of the allowed approach. In this case, Given the object is a cylinder, we can rotate it in the y-axis, having the same strategy of grasp. This is a perfect example of setting an invariance starting at 0 degrees up to 360 degrees. In terms of a number of steps, we recommend using 24. This parameter was concluded by testing various values and 24 proved to be again the right balance between speed and efficiency. So, let's summarize. We have 12 positions of the tool and so far 24 gripping points. What the system does is test all the combinations up to 288 calculations. The first successful calculation will push the object up in the pipeline to path planning. We allow the user to maintain as many gripping points as required. The goal again is to cover the object with the gripping points from every approachable angle. There is also the option to disable the gripping point for testing purposes. It might be handy to test one gripping point at the time of commissioning. This is one of the features added after the requests of our pilot users. Now let's continue with configuring a grasping method. A grasping method represents the strategy for the robot movements. There are three mandatory steps, start, grasp and end. In addition, there are two strongly recommended steps, approach and de-approach. By clicking on the small info sign, the user can call a tooltip window with a short description and visualization of the movement. The first action in the grasping stage is start. This step is mandatory. As you see from the name, this type defines the position from the which the trajectory planning will be initiated. We want to keep this very simple, so the teaching of this point is done via a robotic pendant. The position is transferred to the vision controller in the very first procedure called up in the bin picking program. 
Consider the position above the bin so there are no unnecessary obstacles in the way down to the parts. The user may call a custom procedure by selecting the name in the Procedure Name drop down box. The second stage in the sequence is a step called Approach. In this path stage, the gripper is moved to a position defined by a relative offset with regards to the located gripping point on the part. Usually, the offset is set several centimeters in the opposite direction of the gripping point's Z axis. Please ensure that you're now working in the coordinate system of the part, hence the Z axis is pointing inside the bin. This is the reason why the offset number is negative. Do not worry if this explanation is not completely understood. We have added hints, articles and pictures explaining the approach path stage in great detail. These documents are available in Bin Picking Studio on the right hand side of the panel. The next stage is called Grasp. As you may correctly assume, this is the moment when the robot attaches the part to the gripper. The movement from approach waypoint to grasp is done linearly by default. What we need to do as part of the configuration is call a custom procedure. This procedure is defined in the robotic program where you should write your implementation. Most likely the procedure you want to call is the one called attach. This one will enable one of the digital outputs to turn on the magnetic tool or perhaps close the teeth on your two finger tool. Now we need to configure a way back. The first path stage will be the so-called D approach. While with the approach stage we aim to move linearly in the coordinate system of the object parallel to the Z axis, for D approach we just want to go straight up the objective being to move in parallel to the sides of the bin. This could be associated with the coordinate system of the robot itself. The robot coordinate system is located in the base of the robot with the z-axis pointing in a positive direction up and the x-axis usually in the direction of the bin. In terms of values, please use the checkbox Use Relative Offset. In the drop-down list called Origin of Relative Offset, select Robot as a value. Fill out the desired value in Relative Offset Z with the desired rise in millimeters. In the path stage called End, the gripper is moved to the final position defined on the robot controller. This is a point where the path planning ends. From this point onwards, it is up to the robotic integrator to program the movements of the placing procedure or alternatively any other operations of the automated production line. Similarly to start position, end position is taught via the robotic pendant. The point is transferred to the vision controller as the very first thing once the bin picking program on the robot is launched. This means there is no further configuration required in the web front end. We recommend teaching the robot the point right above the bin as it makes the path planning quicker. Please use regular taut points for further object handling in the basic robot program. We have now concluded one of the major subjects of today's webinar. At this point you should be able to define your tool, gripping points and finally set some boundaries for the robot movements. Since we still have some time, let's cover the topic of what we called working environments. Working environments have been the subject of a redesign since the last version. Working environment refers to any object in the reach of the robotic manipulator, but not limited to it. These objects are represented by the CAD models aligned to a single reference point. For this purpose, we decided to use the robotic base. We will describe the rules around aligning the environment to the reference point in the next slides. For now, please note that the origin of every working environment model, point zero, 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 should be aligned with the mounting position of the robot base. 
However, it can be further adjusted manually if required. Let's start with the categorization of the working environments. We support three types of working environment. Environment, bin object and collision object. Please do not get confused by the last type mentioned. Every single type loaded will be considered by the robot as an obstacle and any collision with it will be avoided in order to prevent damage. The first working environment to discuss here is the type environment. This CAD model should contain a mounting construction. Please pay attention to the coordinate system. The robot will be mounted in a virtual environment at the origin of the drawing. Also note that only a single instance of environment is allowed. This type is a mandatory component. You will be able to check the alignment of the robot and the environment in the visualization section. This will be, however, the subject of the next session. The second working environment is called bin object. As the name states, this object represents a bin with the parts. As opposed to the previous type, you can load multiple instances. This object is not mandatory and in theory can be part of the previous type. However, we strongly recommend separating it, since you can then utilize the option to adjust its position. There are several ways to check the alignment of the virtual representation of the bin and the real appearance. We will cover these in the next episode. Any adjustment of the position is done with respect to the local origin of the CAD model of the bin. Translation and rotation around all three axes are allowed. The last working environment type is collision object, which defines the fence restricting area where the robot can operate. In the case of manipulators with a larger reach, please consider avoiding a gap in the collision object. Multiple instances of this type are allowed, so you can create a single plane, load more times, move and rotate each and build a fence around the robot. Let's close today's session with a remark that given this approach, it is evident that this application is suitable to a static environment. What we mean by this is, if there is a new object which suddenly appears in the reach of the robot, it needs to be immediately added in the form of a CAD model to the environment, otherwise there is a high risk of collision. Thank you very much for attending the third episode of the Bing Picking Studio webinar. Today we covered the following topics, tool point definition, gripping points and configuring the grasping method. You learned about invariance and how it could be used as an advantage in robot handling applications. We also covered working environments. We explained all three types, environment, bin object and collision object. Next time, we will start with the validation of the system we model today and explore calibration. Please let us know your feedback, ideas for improvement or ask for help at support at photoneo.com. See you in the next episode.